For this first set of questions, we have a variety of definitions that we need to understand. The first one is polygon. A five-sided polygon would be known as a pentagon. And then from here, we're taking a look. It says dodecagon. That's the next one. If we break down that word, do meaning two, deca meaning ten, two and ten together give us a twelve-sided polygon. Nonagon. This is a name for nine. So how many interior angles does a nonagon have? That would be nine. Uh, explain how all squares are rhombuses. The definition of a rhombus is that it has all four sides that are congruent to each other, and squares fit that definition. So we would say all four sides are congruent for that one. And then on this last one, explain how all quadrilaterals are not necessarily rectangles. Well, quadrilaterals have four sides, so do rectangles, but quadrilaterals could be any shape with four sides. So we get a shape like this, for example, which is not a rectangle because we have these two sides here and here, opposite sides that are not congruent to each other. Also, the angles are not 90 degree angles. And so a quadrilateral is not necessarily a rectangle. On this next question, we have to be able to identify and classify some angles. Our choices are complementary, supplementary, and vertical angles. And then this notation here helps us identify the angles. So angle KJP, that would go from K to J to P. That would be this angle right here. And NJP would go N to J to P. All right, so those two angles, as we can see right here, form a straight line. That means that those are supplementary angles. On the next one, we have KJL and NJL. So let's find those on our diagram. We've got KJL, it's this 90 degree angle right here. And NJL would be that angle right there. Again, those two form a straight line, so those would also be supplementary. Now, there are a variety of other angles I could ask about, so I just want to chat about a few of them and get some of these other definitions. If I were, for example, to take a look at LJM right there and MJN, these two angles together form a 90 degree angle. We can see that. So those would be complementary angles. On this particular diagram, we do not have two lines that intersect with each other. So we actually do not have any vertical angles on this picture. However, if we go to this next picture, we can find some. So let's take a look at these examples. We've got eight and six. That would be this angle here and here. Those two are across from each other with intersection of, of straight lines here and here. So those are vertical angles. We can see that in this diagram. On 1 and 4, that would be here and here. Again, we've got two straight lines right there and right there that intersect with each other. So these, again, are vertical angles. And then 6 and 9, 6 and 9 are here and here. Those two form a straight line right there. So those would be supplementary. So let's write these three down. These two are vertical angles. These two are vertical angles again. And last, these two are supplementary. For these questions, we have a compass on the right. We'll talk about how to read that as we go along. We have to be able to identify those and then give a classification as right, obtuse, or acute. Those are our three choices for this particular question. So let's take a look at our angles. The first one is PQS. It's right here. So angle PQS is right there. Now when we're reading this, uh, it is nice that this is along the base of that, and it starts at the number zero here. 
Uh, we could start at either of these two numbers, 0 and 180 here at the edge. For me, it's a lot easier to start at 0, so I'm going to use the outside numbers. And we're going to go from here all the way along until we get to the other ray that forms that angle. And we're using the outside numbers, so we have to figure out exactly where this hits on the compass. And we can see it's in between the numbers 140 and 150, halfway in between. So the angle right there would be 145. That would be halfway in between 140 and 150. Our next angle, TQS, no, T to Q to S, that one does not sit nicely on the zero on either side, so we're going to have to use the two numbers and subtract, figure out how far apart they are. So I'm going to use the outside ed numbers again. We could use either one and it would be fine. We're going from 90 here to 145 there. From 90 to 145, that is a 55 degree angle. So we get 55, and I just did that by 145 minus 90 got us 55. On our last one, we're looking at UQP, this angle here. So UQP is this one. And again, we have this sitting at that zero right along the edge. So we're going to look from that zero out to this line, going from here to here is from zero to halfway in between the 50 and the 60. Halfway in between the 50 and 60 is going to be 55. So this one again ends up being 55 degrees. Now we have to classify each of these. So 145 degrees, that is obtuse. 55 degrees is acute. And 55 degrees again, of course, would be acute. Um, right angle is a 90 degree angle. So if I, for example, asked about RQT, that's a 90 degree angle we can see from zero all the way out to 90 degrees right there. So that would be our, an example of our right angle for this if we were to choose to ask about that one. For our next question, we're going to take a look at this angle PQR. It's 127 degrees PQR. And we're asked about SQR. SQR is this angle right here. So the way that we're going to go about doing this is we're going to set up an equation to find the value of x. And once we've found the value of x, we can plug it back in there and we'll know the value for sqr. We are going to use that 127 degrees to set up that equation. So these two angles together, the 9x plus 11, 9x plus 11, and the 7x minus 5, together add up to be the angle pqr. So add those two together and it equals 127 because we were given that measure right here, 127 degrees. Now from here we can solve our equation. We can combine those like terms, the x's and these like terms. 9x and a 7x make 16x. 11 and a negative 5 make positive 6. We get 127. Subtract 6 from that and subtract 6. We end up with 16x equals 121. Divide this by 16, gives us a value of 7.5625. I'm just going to keep all those decimals. So we get 7.5625. Now we need to take that value, we need to plug it in for x like we talked about. And then we calculate that and we'll have our angle. So we end up with 9 times 7.5625 plus 11. That gets us a measure of 79.0625. Now I like to double check and make sure that I actually add up to 127, so I'm going to plug it into here, not because I need it, but just because I want to make sure that I did my calculations correctly. And so we get 7 times 7.5625 minus 5. When we calculate that we get 47.9375 and when we add these two numbers together that indeed does get us a value of 127 degrees. So that confirms that we did it correctly. Our answer then is 79.0625. It's the number we calculated a while ago right there.
and we have confirmed that that is correct. On this next one, we're going to use the definition of the word bisect. That means that this angle and this angle are the same measure because this BD has cut the large angle in half. That will allow us to set up an equation and we are going to use the same strategy as before where we find the value for X and then plug it in. The angle we're looking for is ABD, so that would be ABD, this angle right here. All right, setting up the equation, we have 8X plus 35 equals 11x plus 23. We can set those equal to each other again because they are the word bisect means that we've cut it exactly in half. Solving this, we'll subtract 11x onto this side. We end up with negative 3x plus 35 equals 23. Subtract that 35. And we end up with negative 3x equals negative 12. Finish this out by dividing by negative 3. And we get x equals positive 4. So we're going to plug it into here to find out what our value is. If our x value is 4, that gives us 8 times 4 plus 35. Calculating that, we get a value of 67. Now, if we're correct, then when we plug this one in here, that should also get us a value of 67, because we said they should be equal. So let's double check. We get 11 times 4 plus 23. That's 44 plus 23, which indeed gets us a value of 67. So we did our work correct. ABD then is 67 degrees, and we're finished up with this one. All right, our last question asks us, or gives us the information that they are complementary. Complementary means that they add up to 90 degrees. So we're trying to find the measure of each of these angles. And again, if I knew the value for x, I would be able to plug that in and calculate them. So we're going to use complementary to set up our equation. Find x, plug them back in. So 2x plus 6 and 1 third x minus 7 are our two angles. Since they're complementary, we know that they can add up to be 90 degrees. And now we can solve this. Let's put these like terms together, put those like terms together. We end up with 7 thirds x minus 1 equals 90. Add 1, we get 7 thirds x equals 91. And then we'll multiply by 3 sevenths. Multiply this by 3 sevenths to get a value of x equals 39. Alrighty, we're going to plug that value of 39 into here and into here to find our two angles. And if we are correct, they should add up to 90 degrees. First, we get 2 times 39 plus 6. 2 times 39 is 78. And 78 plus 6 gets us 84. That should be the measure of that first angle. Let's plug in 39 into there. We get 1 third times 39 minus 7. 1 third times 39 is 13. And 13 minus 7 is 6 degrees. So we have two angles that add up to 90 degrees. That means our answer was correct. UVW is this one right here. And LMN is this one right here. So we're going to write equals measure of angle UVW for that and use that same notation over here for this one. Thank you very much for watching and good luck.